It's a bull. <clears throat> Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Looks like the tractors are out there cleaning up a lot of seaweed uh, with these winds and everything pushing uh, uh, towards the uh, west. And I actually saw three of them out here today. And if you're not familiar with my videos here, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. I know that's a bit premature, but I might forget to ask you otherwise. And where am I? I am where and who am I? I am Brian Kuzmar. I am the owner of uh, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. I am a full-time precious metal dealer and rare coins and paper money and other things, too. We have a jewelry and estate business as well. Uh, but I've been doing this since 1977, pretty much full-time. Uh, second generation, started working for my father back then. Started my own place here in 1995. Uh, for uh, uh, my own reasons, obviously. And, <laughs> and uh, I am located, this is the live uh, uh, Lauderdale by the Sea the Cam, a little cloudy out there, but uh, I am located, if you follow the skipping hand, the skippy hand here, about uh, two or three blocks, I think I said three or four yesterday, but probably two or three blocks, depending on what part of the country you live in, uh, down from this pier on the right-hand side. So if you come and visit me, uh, make sure you take a walk down here. Um, the pier only goes out to here. They haven't fixed it since the hurricane. I wish I could buy that sucker. <laughs> uh, but it is a beautiful uh, uh, little city here and a nice place to be. Well, let me uh, <clears throat> escape out of here and go into what we're talking about today. Let me start out with this. Gresham's Law. Bad money drives out good money by Thomas Gresham until gold drives out bad money. I like this little meme. Uh, I don't know if he ever said that verbatim. I didn't check that, but more or less, this is what uh, uh, Gresham talked about, Gresham's Law. Uh, and let me repeat this here. Oh, boy, there's a whole host of characters up there. huh? In economics, Gresham's Law is a monetary principle stating that bad money drives out good. Uh, I guess that's kind of paraphrasing what uh, uh, Gresham's Law is. Uh, for example, if there are two forms of commodity money in circulation, which are accepted by law as having similar face value, the more valuable commodity will disappear from circulation. And more or less, what they're talking about is, is when you have, uh, uh, say for example, uh, you had Argentina or uh, uh, Venezuelan pesos or whatever they use, uh, Caracas or whatever the heck they use, uh, pesos. Venezuelan pesos, uh, which you could use in uh, the United States, just pretend. You could use Venezuela pesos or you could use U.S. dollars. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> which would you tend to spend first and which one would you save? Um, and that's actually that in a nutshell. Well, obviously, knowing what you know about Venezuela and knowing how fast they're going through currency depreciation uh, and how much they were printing and uh, adding zeros to their uh, uh, pesos. Um, and again, I can forget if Venezuela's pesos or not. My, forgive me. I'm a coin person, too. I should know that. Uh, but uh, uh, just compare the two. Now, if you're in the United States and the, and the United States government said, okay, you know, you can spend uh, uh, Venezuelan pesos here. It's just like dollars. Um, and you got paid every week in a little bit of both. You got paid in uh, uh, Venezuelan pesos and you got paid in uh, U.S. dollars. Uh, so you're going to go out to the shopping mall and you're going to spend money. Which money? And then you're going to save some of it. Which money are you going to spend and which money are you going to save? Well, obviously, you're going to save the U.S. dollars because they're stable or somewhat more stable than the peso. And again, I'm using this as an example uh, versus uh, the uh, peso, which keeps uh, uh, falling in value on a daily basis. Well, this is kind of what we got going on with gold and uh, versus the dollar uh, or at other assets versus the dollar. But the problem with the dollar is the dollar is run by the Fed and the Fed hates competition. I say this all the time. Governments hate competition, but bankers, they hate it even more. And bankers ultimately do write the, world, the rules in the world, uh, <clears throat> not governments, uh, bankers do. Uh, and that's the way it's become in our world, unfortunately. But no less, uh, what we've got here is uh, we've got a similar situation. And I want to point out what you're doing as gold and silver stackers. You're following Gresham's law uh, almost to a T. Now, gold and silver is not really considered money uh, per se, um, but it is. Uh, for 5,000 years, it's been money. Central bankers own it. And if you take a look, all the big central banks, uh, all of the Chinese central banks, Russian central banks, United States, U.S. central banks, German central banks, they all buy gold. And they all store it in their vaults. They hide it away and secretively. Why do they do that? Because they know it's real money, and so do we. But not everyone does. A lot of people out there are completely clueless what real 
real money is. They're out there spending their dollar bills, their pesos, their their wands, their uh, um, uh, you know rubles or whatever it may be. Uh, their fiat. That's what they're out there spending. And you all know what fiat is. You should by now. I've said it enough times. Uh, so what we've got is Gresham's Law going on here with gold and silver. This is why you don't need to panic on down days when you know it provides an opportunity to buy the dip, as I said. We uh, gold and silver and platinum are about wealth preservation. And let me just kind of more talk about gold and silver. Gold and silver is about wealth preservation. It's not about getting rich quick. Now, there's a lot of new people that always get into gold and silver uh, with that expectation of getting. They heard of a friend that said that gold is going to fly through the roof. Uh, the economy is going to take a shit tomorrow. And uh, if you don't have it by next Friday, by next Friday, it's going to. I'm exaggerating slightly, but if you're going into buying precious metals, with the idea that you're going to get rich quick, then uh, I suggest you go find another market like cryptocurrencies or Las Vegas, uh, which are similar markets in my opinion. Um, so uh, that that's that's what I would say. You 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 really shouldn't be into uh, uh, precious metals uh, if you're looking to get rich quick. If you're looking to preserve your wealth and the potential of making some good money, uh, then you are at the right place. And if you understand Gresham's law in any way, shape, or form, then you are in the right place buying gold. Uh, get rid of your dollars and hang on to your gold uh, because gold is real money and all you have to do is look at what the people that tell you otherwise do. They have gold and silver. Do you think that the, uh, Fe the Federal Reserve um, Central Bank of China, the Central Bank of uh, Russia are sitting there with piles of cash inside their vaults. You know, what's in Fort Knox is certainly not U.S. dollars. It's gold, folks. Hopefully, hopefully there's gold in Fort Knox. Uh, but it's not cash. It's gold. Um, and we'll get into that as well as what the big important thing of the whole Basel III uh, last week. That if you read one sentence in Basel III, it was raising gold to a tier one asset. And I'll get into that in a little bit. And we'll go over some other things here as well including what the uh, best deal is out there. I'm going to keep it short today if I can. Uh, so uh, here's my analogy too as well. Uh, besides the fact that central bankers own gold and there, there's not piles of cash sitting in Fort Knox but gold more than likely if there is gold in Fort Knox. Uh, some people don't believe that. I'm on the wall about it so uh, let me know what you think in comments. But uh, no less, uh, we just talked about Gresham's Law, people spending cash, and, and what you're doing, what my stackers are doing out here, gold and silver, the people that listen to me, the people that uh, 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 are out there talking about gold and silver, we all have one thing in common, is we're getting rid of fiat worthless dollars paper for real money. We are following Gresham's Law. We're, we're, we're getting rid of the bad money and we're keeping the good money. Um, but I got an analogy here too as well, what the Fed does, and more or less, the Fed, this, you know, you're on a plane, you look out the window, you see smoke coming from the engines, you see, and you're kind of heading in a downward trajectory, uh, and then what you've got is you've got the uh, the Federal Reserve here walking up the aisles with their little smile on their half-assed smile, um, is saying, hey, relax, everything's calm, relax, No, there's no worries, don't worry about this, everything's fine here. Now, that's what the Fed needs. Listen, people accuse the Fed of being liars. They accuse the Fed of being stupid. Trust me, these are not stupid people at all, in the slightest bit. Uh, never underestimate the Fed. You know, I know I get uh, antsy sometimes, and I may insult them, and I may call them idiots and morons occasionally, and I'm, I'm sure everyone does, but the truth of the matter is they are not in any way, shape, or form. The reality of the situation is just like this stewardess on this plane right here, just like this stewardess, the Fed has no other choice than to smile um, and offer you a drink or something uh, and offer you some peanuts and show you how to put your life vest on. They have to keep up. You know, they're, they're, running a, uh, they're, they're running a program of fiat currency, and there's no fiat that's ever existed. You know, the United States dollar is the longest surviving fiat currency in history since 1972. Think about that for a second. Uh, we are the experiment. Look where it's going. So what other choice does the Fed have uh, when this is the fiat currency? Here we are all sitting here looking out the window, seeing the smoke, and the uh, steward is the Fed is walking up and down the aisles with the life vest saying, here, do you just in case, you know, you may want to learn how to use this, but uh, everything's okay. We're going to be fine. Uh, that's what we've got going on, in my opinion. Uh, so what does this all really mean on a down day like this? Uh, gold is real money, folks. Uh, that's why central banks own it. Uh, 
the, the dollars in your pocket, the pesos, the rubles, the yuan, uh, the Chinese yuan, or whatever it may be you, you're carrying in your pocket is just a means to buy stuff with, but it is not real money. Gold is real money. Silver is real money. Um, <clears throat> so don't ever let them let you think otherwise. Uh, so these dips right here for you folks, buy the freaking dips. This is an opportunity to buy good money with bad money. So, so what happens is the good money decreases in value. And don't ask me why they do this, but they do it. They purposely monkey ham it, and monkey hammy. <laughs> I like that word better. They purposely monkey hammer these markets downwards. Um, and uh, this is Fed. You know, gold and silver, and I honestly believe this, and I think it's silver too. I'm starting to really believe that the silver markets are manipulated by, uh, uh, by governments as well. And I think it has a lot to do with silver. And I've discussed this a couple times, mentioned this. We don't talk about silver being a strategic metal. Um, however, but think about this. Uh, now that uh, they've eliminated the use of lead solders pretty much entirely all over the world, silver is primarily used in, uh, uh, as solder. Uh, and one of the interesting little things here, where did that go? I saw this and I really like this. Not many people realize, and I, and I digress a little bit talking about the Fed and talking about uh, uh, Gresham's Law. Uh, however, now I'm going to talk about the importance of a particular metal, silver. Uh, gold is money. We know that. That's central banks own it. So the, what's the importance of gold? It is money. Uh, and it, but it's not used uh, as a product very, I mean, in electronics somewhat, uh, but not like silver. Uh, I'm starting to think that silver, like gold, is being purposely kept down by governments for the reason of uh, it's it's a strategic metal, I think. If you really look at it in some form, maybe not by definition a strategic metal. However, just imagine all of a sudden, all everybody, we've already got a silver above ground physical shortage out there. A lot of silver gets thrown away. A lot of it's in landfills. There's people that say there's there's more above ground gold available than there is silver. And, I, you know, I'm tending to believe that, although I haven't really saw the data that backs it up, you know, Absolutely. Uh, so, but take a look at this. Our motor vehicles are becoming more and more computerized, and silver plays a vital role in that operation. Over 60 million ounces of silver are used annually in motor vehicles. Think about that, folks. That's a huge amount. Where does this silver go? It doesn't get. Trust me, when your car goes to the junkyard, I don't think they're pulling out the circuit boards and pulling the circuit out circuits out. I think that stuff gets crushed and sent to the landfills. Uh, so, right off the bat, 60 million a year. 60 million ounces a year, not gold, 60 million ounces of silver. And I believe that uh, uh, that they are recognizing how important silver is as a strategic metal. Because what, what happens if you can't make printed circuit boards? What happens if you can't use uh, uh, silver in computers anymore? What are they going to have to do, gear back up to get lead? Uh, and you know how green these people are now. They're not going to do that. And even if they had to, how long would it take up to gear, gear up making silver solders again? I mean, uh, lead solders versus silver solders. Um, so automakers today are increasingly on silver to enable the vast technology advances incorporated into modern vehicles. Think about the battery technology. I wonder how much silver is in a Tesla. Um, and if any of you want to make uh, something in comments, do a little Google search. Let me know. I'd be curious how much how much is in an electric car silver. So think about what the government has to deal with if all of a sudden investors all over start buying silver. Um, you know. What happens? All of a sudden, silver starts disappearing on the open markets. It causes the price of silver to go up dramatically uh, because now we're competing. Investors are competing right now with car companies, electronic companies, uh, you're, you're, with the military even. Because you know, think about how many electronics go into military equipment. Uh, so it is a strategic metal if you really think about it. So I would bet you. Uh, well, let me not say bet, but I, I think it's highly likely uh, that the uh, monkey hammering and silver and the prices being kept down are the uh, are, has a lot to do with uh, governments. I really do believe that. Now, China, for example, China has just come right out and said that uh, the Chinese central bankers, the Chinese CCP, actually, uh, well, actually, CCP is everything. They run everything. But uh, uh, they basically came out and said uh, uh, iron prices were rising, aluminum prices were rising, copper was getting up there, too. Uh, so a lot of people were investing in copper. All of a sudden, China came out and said, no, 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 no. That's going to screw with our uh, economy. So what we're going to do is we're going to put caps on uh, uh, you know, sales of copper. We're going to release our own personal supplies, uh, state supply of copper, aluminum, and uh, iron. And what they did, they killed the copper, aluminum, and iron market. Temporarily, that is. Temporarily. Uh, so they can only hold it down for so long. And that includes the Fed with silver. 
is look where silver's at right now, 25 bucks an ounce, 30 bucks an ounce. Don't you think that the government and corporations and companies that use silver in their products would rather have silver at 15 bucks an ounce? But it's not. So they can only hold it so long. So what is my point of this conversation here? As I said, uh, Gresham's Law, bad money drives out good money. So uh, you're going to save your silver and you're going to uh, get rid of your dollars, your worthless dollars. That's what the feds do. They, they pawn the dollars off on us. The central banks pawn their fiat off on us and they store gold for themselves. Uh, so that's what the smart people like. We're doing what the central bankers do, but don't tell us to do. Uh, you're putting away gold and silver, folks. It's great. And, and why would you panic about the price going down right now? Uh, so for you folks out there, mostly you new folks, you're probably, oh my God, I just bought a bunch at a higher price. Relax. This provides an opportunity to do what? As I've said, it provides the opportunity to buy the friggin' dips. Uh, so when you see these dips right here, recognize that they're only temporary. Um, and when I say temporary, it could be a day, it could be a month, it could be a couple months uh, before you start to see moves up. But uh, we're already seeing moves up. We just seen, again, another monkey hammering going on, and that's exactly what's happening in these markets. Let's take a look at these markets from overnight and see uh, what kind of monkey hammering happened. You know, I wish I had uh, stayed up and saw what the overnight markets looked like because I don't know if this monkey ha hammering occurred in New York this morning and occurred uh, London earlier or in the evening sometime in, in some other market. I'm not quite sure, but nonetheless, it happened. And the strange thing is it happens when it's – you ever notice, and, and I've noticed this for years, this is – some form of spoofing. This is some form of manipulation by a government or a major uh, uh, entity out there that's driving these prices down. It happens overnight, folks. You ever notice that these big, big downs and these big moves happen when everyone's sleeping uh, in thin markets, thinly traded markets? Who does that? Nobody sells gold and silver into a thinly traded market unless their entire desire is to drive the market down. And that's what we see happen consistently over and over. In fact, if you take a look at uh, this article right here, second former Deutsche Bank spoof trader gets a year in prison. Uh, that's when they would do it, early in the morning or uh, uh, late at the close or during the opening. Uh, so uh, uh, it's just blatant manipulation, folks. As I said, though, what is gold? Gold is good money. What is Currencies, currencies are fiats, currencies are bad money. So what is this opportunity? Uh, what does the down prices provide you the opportunity to do? Get rid of your crappy ass fiat for more physical gold, more good money. So this is a good thing. I don't know, you know, don't freak out when you see these price, prices go down. It just provides people a more opportunity to, to get rid of the bad money and uh, trade it in for some good money. Overpriced bad money for underpriced good money. That's how you should look at it. Uh, silver the same way. Look at that 25.59 to 26.14 overnight markets. Not a big you know, down for silver though. Silver is really holding its own in this mid 25 level. I mean, could it get hammered? Yeah, it could it, maybe, but it, it's surprisingly holding. And that's because uh, a couple things. First off, uh, last year, silver, as I said, is I believe is much rarer than gold in many ways, uh, above ground supplies at, at least. Uh, maybe not in the earth. Maybe there's a lot more silver in the earth, 70 to one, 17 to 1 or something like that, 17 ounces of silver in the earth uh, in our crust and our mantle for every ounce of gold. I believe that's what geologically we have, uh, but no less. Um, above ground, I think last year, because before 2020, before the closures of 2020, there was a shortage of silver. It was getting harder and harder to find before 2020, folks. Then we had 2020 come along and completely shut down that entire market, shut down mines, shut down the transportation of silver, shut down the minting of silver uh, for nearly a year. Now we're back up and running. you got manufacturing competing for silver with investors, uh, and you don't have a lot of above ground, and you had a limited amount of mining for a whole year. Um, I think there is a major, major major silver shortage out there. I think governments are behind the scenes uh, 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 trying to finagle this whole thing, uh, trying to keep the prices of silver down uh, because, again, silver is probably one of the most important products uh, next to oil in our entire industry. It's used in every electronic device, and we are in an electronic world. Think about this. Um, 
Platinum, 1,072, got knocked about 20 bucks as well. Uh, again, just following, you know, most of these metals will follow uh, gold. However, as I said, the impressive thing is that uh, even though gold got uh, monkey hammered from its highs of last year, 2,100, we're nearing that mark, uh, and we'll get there again pretty soon. Uh, this just provides good opportunity to buy, as I said. Uh, and uh, Silver never really took that big giant hit like gold did. Uh, so silver is holding its own. I think there's a lot of, uh, again, I think silver is a lot rarer than people uh, uh, believe it is. I think governments and uh, uh, are trying to keep the price of silver down. I believe it is a strategic metal now. I think it's safe to call it that. Um, but again, again, I don't want to keep saying again in these things. My apology for saying again and again all the time. Uh, you, if you ever do these shows, by the way, I do them every day. I do them off the cuff. They're not scripted. Uh, you just got to wing it. But you, when you start to listen to yourself afterwards, and I listen to these shows just to see uh, where I screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> or, or whatever, just to kind of try to learn how to do it better. But I, 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 I regret saying words over and over again, so my apology. Uh, again, <laughs> um, let's see here. Where are we going to go from here? Well, buy the dips, folks. That's the best thing I can tell you right now. Buy the dips, dip, dips. Buy the dips and relax. Uh, GATA.org, um, again, this should be on your bookmark bar. If you are a gold and silver stacker and you are a smart gold and silver stacker and you plan on making money, uh, and uh, preserving your wealth, then you need to uh, uh, be reading this. Uh, one of the things that, uh, here, let me cut that off. Phones are ringing again. And uh, let me uh, show you the basics here real quick. I'm going to click this article. This is the basic gold man market manipulation, why, how, and how long. Uh, Chris Powell, gold market manipulation, why, how, and how long, 2014 edition. Um, and talks about the gold suppression, who does it? They're mostly talking about gold here, but you can imagine that silver could be manipulated just the same way by governments. And uh, they lay it out pretty darn good. If you click that link, you'll see uh, there's a nice little uh, uh, visual presentation uh, and some of the books, uh, I don't know why they have that, but there's a reason. Uh, oh, I know why they have that uh, book right there is because it talks about the London Gold Pool and when the London Gold Pool. So, I mean, if you want to be smarter than the average bear and, and maybe even smarter than uh, uh, a lot of people that talk about gold and silver on YouTube, uh, I would recommend that you uh, read uh, the basics, confiscation documentation, and read all these articles. Um, not, not in one sitting, but uh, trust me, start working on that. Let's take a look at their articles as well because they do come up, they do have uh, daily new articles. Uh, another uh, former uh, Deutsche Bank uh, spoof trader gets a year in prison. You know, for years they told us that it was impossible for gold and silver. CNBC, Bloomberg, uh, corporate media, governments, uh, governments, uh, uh, their uh, uh, regulators themselves, even the regulators, the idiots. Uh, now, I do call regulators idiots because for the most part they are. Most of them work for the corporations they're supposed to be watching. Uh, but that's a whole different story here, folks. Second former Deutsche Bank spoof gets traded gets a year in prison. A year in prison. Think about that. And I'm going to tell you what's crazy about that too is, first off, he got a year in prison. Um, uh, probably lots of people lost millions and millions, if not billions of dollars because of his manipulation. And then let's look at that too, what I just said, his manipulation. It wasn't his manipulation. It was Deutsche Bank that did it. And this guy got a year in prison. They threw him under a bus, folks. The banks are the bad guys, not the traders. The traders are just doing, well, Oh, boy, the traders are doing what they're told to be doing, but you know what they said about uh, concentration camp uh, guards. They were just being told what to do. So, I mean, may, he deserves some time in jail, but what did Deutsche Bank get? Uh, did they get a major fine or any of their CEOs in jail? Not a single fucking one. Excuse my language, but it's true. That's going to make you a little bit mad. Allocated beer meets unallocated gold in Scotland. That's funny as hell. you got to read that. Uh, uh, winner of brew dog solid gold beer can finds prizes mainly brass. I think the guy should sue. They they insinuated that that it would be a, a solid gold can, um, no less. Um, this will give you a good reason to uh, uh, read Gata maybe uh, and read one of the articles on here. Uh, so I'll leave that one alone. Uh, Fed's quarrel says digital dollar could pose uh, pose considerable risk to financial systems. And uh, China's net gold imports in Hong Kong slumps nearly 59%. And let me tell you, I'll tell you why it slumps 59%. Again, China is very open. Uh, you know, when they said that uh, they weren't going to tolerate uh, uh, the iron, uh, aluminum, and copper market going up, they just came right out and said it. 
They just set it openly. You know, we're going to drive the price down. We're going to manipulate the price. They're, they're cool with doing that. They're, they're fine with just coming right out and saying that they manipulate markets. The Fed, the central, because I guess we live in a uh, supposedly free market capitalist system that's supposed to be fair, the Fed uh, um, uh, won't openly say it. They just go back and do it behind our backs. Uh, so, uh, again... Uh, let's move back up to here. Fed Quarrel says digital dollars could pose considerable risk to financial system. And where is that? That's right here. Quarrels compares Bitcoin to gold. Um, I recommend you read this article, by the way. It's very good. Whether you read it in GAT, I notice it's in both uh, here and in uh, Zero Hedge. Uh, read that for sure. Uh, and I did highlight something here on ZH that Quarrels compares Bitcoin to gold. Some commentators assert, I'm going to read this verbatim, some commentators assert that the United States must develop a CBDC to counter the appeal of cryptocurrencies. This seems mistaken. Uh, the mechanisms used to create such crypto asset values also ensure the value will be highly volatile, rather similar to the fluctuating value of gold, which, like Bitcoin, draws a significant part of its value from scarcity. And like Bitcoin, does not play a significant role in today's uh, payment or monetary system. And he's talking about gold. It really doesn't uh, in payments or the monetary system per se. But again, what he's not telling you is that the Fed stores gold. As that's their, that's how they preserve their wealth. They store gold and they pawn the fiat off on us. But as I've said that a million times already. So, but here again, he kind of says that without saying that. Unlike gold, however, which has industrial uses and aesthetic attributes quite apart from its vestigial financial role, Bitcoin's principal additional attractions are its novelty and its anonymity. The anonymity will make it appropriately the target for increasingly comprehensive scrutiny from law enforcement and the novelty is rapidly wasting asset. Uh, I think that's genuinely dishonest. Um, increasing comprehensive scrutiny from law enforcement, I don't believe that. The scrutiny is really coming from central banks who, who hate what? Folks, what do they hate? They hate competition. Uh, but this statement was very telling. Uh, gold will always glitter, but novelty by definition fades. What a great statement. Uh, and I got to hand uh, uh, Fed Chairman Quarles for that statement. Uh, I'm going to say it one more time. Gold will always glitter, but novelty by definition fades. And Bitcoin is what he's talking about is uh, novelty. Bitcoin and its ilk will accordingly most certainly remain a risky and speculative investment rather than a revolutionary means of payment. And they are therefore highly unlikely to affect the role of the US dollar or require a response with a CBDC. Um, quarterly really shines, uh, Quarles really signs with a statement, gold will always glitter by novelty. Uh, emphasis, mine, uh, well, anyway, great read there. Highly recommend you read this article. Fed Governor compares digital currencies to parachute pants <laughs> and Bitcoin to gold. Um, uh, so, you know, he's got something there. But then again, you've got, uh, uh, where is it? Where'd she go? I think somewhere in here. And uh, sorry, I don't mean to be popping around on you like that. Don't want to. Let me just kind of do a back button here. And somewhere down here, I think Nancy Pelosi uh, had a comment that she was uh, discussing maybe uh, getting into changing dollars, getting into a cash to society, uh, and uh, how the, the, the government would benefit from that, uh, where they could directly pay people <laughs> uh, that didn't have money. Uh, so much uh, stupid stuff there. But... Uh, oh, gosh, speaking of uh, uh, ZH, all kinds of weird, uh, good stuff out here. Black Swan events, typical. Uh, Triple-digit heat dome bakes Pacific Northwest, triggers the first blackout. As I've said many times before, our power infrastructure is pretty weak. I don't know if we've ever fixed it. I kind of doubt it. But uh, if we start having blackouts and regions start going down in the country, this could be really bad economically as well. Uh, and Florida, we're getting into hurricane season, so you know, big storms here could uh, affect as well. There's all kinds of black swan events uh, that could just uh, hurry up the demise of our fiat currency, unfortunately. And uh, that's really about it here. I could go on and on. There's so much news out here. Uh, boy, that's very interesting right there. Um, I guess, uh, who is it, uh, Edward Snowden was absolutely correct. They do spy on us, uh, and it's not legal. And uh, let's see, Basel three. This was kind of interesting, too. Bank of America has a more colorful explanation. Uh, and then speaking of Basel three, it went into effect yesterday. Absolutely nothing happened, but today, Monkey Hammer Tuesday. <laughs> so uh, maybe it did. I don't know. I don't know what today's, uh, what was the result. I just think today's result was just uh, like last time, the takedown. These are just takedowns, folks. Uh, takedowns by uh, uh, big entities uh, probably working for governments. Uh, Bank of America has a more colorful explanation for uh, 
what it really means for gold. And let's take a look at their opinion. Uh, by the way, everyone that has a Bank of America banking account always tells me they're the world's worst bank. Is that true? Uh, from what I hear, it is. If the gold is held in allocated form, a specific bar, uh, really not too much. Oh, geez, I think I. That's not what I wanted to talk about. Sorry about that. I had something down here highlighted. And, uh, God, we've talked about Basel III so much that, you know, if I, if I can't find it here, who cares? <laughs> uh, it's already done and over with, and let's actually see what happens from it. Um, oh, here, this is what I wanted to talk about, and I've already talked about it earlier. While there are many nuances, what is relevant to gold, and this guy points it out in this article. Who is? I'm going to give some credit here. Uh, oh, Mr. Durden. Uh, the guy that actually owns this website wrote this, I believe. Um, where is it? I just saw it there. Hang on a second. There it is, right there. Uh, while there are many nuances, what is the relevant to gold is that under the new regime, physical or allocated gold, like bars and coins, will be reclassified from a Tier 3 asset, the riskiest, to a Tier 1. Uh, I don't think that anyone has really realized how important... I mean, people are talking about, well, it's the end of derivatives. Well, maybe, maybe not, okay? Uh, Basel III may or may not be the end of derivatives. It may or not. But you know what I really think it is? is this is the key to the whole uh, Basel III. Uh, everything else is bullshit. Uh, uh, they have now uh, taken gold and turned it into a Tier 1 zero-risk asset. The question that I think smart gold people and a lot of people that do gold videos need to be asking themselves is, why did they do this? What I don't think it has anything to do with uh, getting rid of paper derivatives, really. Uh, they've left that kind of a gray area, uh, whereas I'm told it's only in Europe, not in the UK. doesn't happen in the U.S. But the important thing, again, is they, they've made gold a Tier 1 asset. I think that's the one thing we really need to focus on on this whole deal. This is the important factor of the whole thing. And why did they make gold a Tier 1 asset? Well, perhaps they're thinking about using the gold that central banks have for some purpose that they need to revalue it and have it as a tier one asset. Uh, I'll get into that some other time. I'm sure we'll be talking more about that later. And uh, that is really good article, by the way, too. Basel III regulations finally kicks in what this means for gold. It's on zero hedge. You can read this for free. Uh, and he lays out, you know, we've talked about what allocated and unallocated is so many times that uh, I'll sound like a broken record if I start talking about it again. I think that's really about it for today's uh, show, folks. Uh, you know, let's talk about silver being a strategic metal. And uh, let's talk more about that uh, uh, maybe on a future show. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow if I get a chance. Uh, meanwhile, um, let's take a look at yesterday's videos and comments. I appreciate everybody watching. And again, if you're still watching and you haven't hit the subscribe button, uh, I appreciate that. And that like button is kind of nice, too. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit vain, I know. <laughs> Uh, in yesterday's report, Expect the Unexpected, uh, I didn't even name that one. Marcelo didn't. Thanks, Marcelo. That was a good title right there, uh, and, which is kind of true. Expect the Unexpected. And what did we get this morning? We got an unexpected down day, uh, an unexpected opportunity to buy the dip. So, oh boy, good morning from uh, Seattle. Hey, Joey, what's up? And uh, again, I'm going to just quickly go through a lot of these right here. A lot of you folks, I really appreciate you watching uh uh, let's take a look here. Truth only says marbles, Coca-Cola, and the Beatles. Your argument for capitalism shows its flaws. None of these things are good, but the Beatles were. <laughs> no, they weren't. Okay, I guess you weren't a Beatles fan. I don't know. I'm up in the air about the Beatles. You know, they're a pop band. I'm not big on pop music, you know. Uh, they are popular music. Oh, you just said it there. They were the Nika Minja of their time. Anyway, I digress here into a different subject, not gold-related, but music. Uh, they broke a generation... Uh, okay, the small government model allows people to choose while imposing no burden. Our system burdens the uh, population and picks winners in the business. Well, that's true. Uh, the worst thing we ever did was uh, 2008 when we bailed out all those banks, and that's kind of what he's saying right here. Uh, we should have let all these banks fail, let, uh, let bigger, better institutions that actually knew how to run a company or knew, knew what to do proper with good assets uh, take over the assets and do it, you know. Why anybody props up failing businesses is beyond me. You should let a failing business fail and let people that know how to run a business buy the assets or restart that business. That's my opinion. That's what they should have done in 2008. Uh, but too big to fail, of course. Ooh, Charlie Norman, thanks for watching Psycho Killer. I see you're still here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, I won't repeat what you said. <laughs> Chris says, Brian, do you think premiums will go back down uh, while spot prices drop? Uh, premiums on gold are going down. But, I, um, you know, this 
recently I'm getting real suspicious that uh, we are in a short supply of silver out there and uh, no one's talking about it really um, I mean we've talked about it but I don't think anyone's taking it that seriously I think there I think we got issues with silver I really do um, I think that uh, uh, corporations are competing for silver uh, with investors now and, and they don't want people investing so they don't want people driving the price of silver up uh, that would be really bad for the economy I think uh, we're not bad for the economy but but not good for inflation you know again think about how much silver is used in electronics that is not a good deal do you think Elon Musk wants to spend double or triple on his batteries that use silver or whatever silver usage is in his car wants to spend triple that cuts into his profit and of course he's going to have to pass that along to his car buyers as well uh, again this is stuff we need to think about uh, Lincoln Willis said the price is immaterial in the end absolutely true uh, my thoughts on Basil 3 just gave them to you sir thanks for watching Inspector Jason Nathan Locke hey brother what's going on Mickey and Nikki hey what's going on as well uh, numerous high-tech security, expensive bank buildings. Uh, oh, yeah, we were talking about buildings here the other day and uh, buildings going down. Thanks for watching, Mickey and Nikki. Larry Hernandez says, awesome video. Uh, awesome comments out there. Thanks, Larry, and thanks all of you other folks out here. Uh, not your problem, says, quick question, which gold coin, coins and bars are exempt from reporting through 1099B form and which ones are partially exempt? Uh, uh, well, there is a, a list of, you know, that 1099B form is, is uh, uh, crazy. Um, I know uh, the guy, I know where that law came from. It came from an IRS agent out of northern Florida that went after, uh, oh man, what was the name? Is my dad's good friend. Um, oh gosh, he's on the tip of my tongue. Well, anyway, this guy had a, a bullion and coin shop in North Florida, very successful shop. Uh, and Emory, Emory, that's his first name. I can't remember, but I can tell you the whole story where 1099s came from. Emory uh, had an IRS audit, and the IRS agent came in there, and Emory was kind of an ornery uh, old fella and uh, gave this IRS agent a lot of trouble and stuff. And because uh, Emory knew he was doing everything by the book. So the IRS agent actually found this obscure broker reporting law. Broker, now mind you, broker reporting law, back in the broker days when the comics, you know, if they delivered you uh, um, 50 pesos or they delivered whatever, you know, comics had different products that they could deliver to you. And uh, uh, this, this IRS agent found this broker reporting law that was really only applicable to people that are licensed brokers, okay, in the commodities market. And he, and he went after Emory for each one of these for like 20 grand a pop for the violation or whatever. It was an obscure law that's used for uh, commodity contracts. Uh, but with the IRS, you know, they can say whatever they want, and they did. They, they went after Emory with this, and in fact, uh, someone at IRS thought this was a great idea just to do this in general. But the folly of this is that it exempts so many other products um, that, so that you don't have to report a lot of products on 10, like American Eagles. They're not reportable, but Krugerrands are. Uh, so what kind of stupid, stupid regulation and law is that? I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's absolutely ludicrous, but I'm not even going to go there. I've discussed it before on my shows. Thanks for bringing it up. Not your problem. It is our problem, actually, dude. <laughs> uh, Basel III will have an effect. They, there's a reason all countries are repatriating the gold and many are increasing their holdings. Tangibles, baby. Well, there you go. You nailed it, Brother Sarge27271. That's what I'm saying, is there federal banks uh, 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 or re, uh, central reserve banks, central banks have been hoarding gold. They have gold. Why? They're pawning off their fiat. Why is that? Because central banks understand Gresham's law. They're pawning off the crap fiat to us. Why? They're stockpiling gold. Voila. Is this getting sinking into some of you folks now? I hope so. Um, <laughs> well, anyways, uh, great show yesterday. Great comments. I appreciate everyone that watched it. Uh, best deals, I'm not going to show you the pictures. I'm going to just give you some numbers here clearly because I don't want this to be too long of a show. Uh, if you're, I would prefer that my customers out here, again, I'm a local coin dealer. So I also always say buy local if you can. Keep that money local. Uh, if you don't live in my area, I recommend you find a local coin dealer because I can't help you folks. I'm sorry. I don't ship. I don't do any of that stuff. I only deal with local folks. Uh, so best deals out there, I'm going to suggest is stick in that 4 to $5 range. If you can buy any silver recognizable forms between 4 and 5 bucks per ounce, that's the best deal. Uh, don't pay more than 6 6 and a quarter if you don't have to. Uh, that would be for us. We have a bunch of maples I have available at 6 and a quarter. Uh, but again, I'd rather see you buying the 90 that I have at uh, $4.25 silver and 100 ounce bars at 4 and a quarter than, than the maples that I have at 6 and a quarter. Uh, but above that, it's just crazy. I get tons of silver eagles, but I just can't comfortably sell them to you guys. I can't. I lock them up in my safe and I'm going to trade them wholesale, let some other dealers buy them. Uh, overpriced for sure. 
Uh, love to buy them, but they're just overpriced, and so are a bunch of other products out there. So stick to four to five dollar range. Uh, when it comes to gold, um, bars are the best deal out there. Any recognizable product that's real, again, I quote real, I, I wouldn't recommend you buy on eBay for sure. I don't recommend you buy from people that don't know what they're looking at. No matter how honest or well-intentioned they are, if you don't know what you're looking at, you just don't know. And you can be the most honest guy in the world and pass off a counterfeit. So uh, buy from uh, recognizable uh, dealers that know what they're looking at and a real product. Don't pay more than, pay between 60 and 85 bucks for gold bars right now. Don't pay more than that. Um, and uh, coins, you know, Krugerrands, I think, are around 100 110 bucks over spot. That's still too high, in my opinion. Uh, above that, it's just crazy. Uh, gold eagles are crazy price. Uh, buffaloes are crazy price. Maples, I think, are too expensive as well. Stick with the bars. Uh, that's my opinion, and I'm going to stick with it. Hey, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Wear Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Waterdale by the Sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811. Between the hours of 10 and 4, Monday through Fridays, happy to help you out. And uh, that's really about it. Coin set a bull. Let's see what happens today. It certainly don't look like a bull to me. <laughs> oh, by the way, I tried a new coin out today. Um, it has a little smoother edges, so it rolls nicer. I don't know if anyone noticed, but there you go. Hey, thanks. Have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow.